Hey guys, so today's video is part 2 of the review of chapter 15 from the book Recursets of Ultrasound and it is the fetal head, face and neck and in this video I will be dealing with all the pathologies. The previous video which was part 1 had dealt with all the normal structures of the fetal head. So first up we'll talk about the dilated lateral ventricle and the dangling choroid plexus. In this image, you can see the choroid plexus indicated by the two short arrows. Its anterior end is attached to the medial wall of the lateral ventricle and the remainder of the choroid plexus is dangling towards the lateral wall which is indicated by the arrowhead. Now in this axial image, you can see a diminutive choroid plexus in an enlarged lateral ventricle. The choroid plexus in, is indicated by the short arrow. Now I'll talk about ventricular megaly and its severity. In this image, you can see that the atrial width of the ventricle is 1.14 cm. So this is mild ventricular megaly. Now in this image, the atrial width of the ventricle is 1.4 cm. So this is moderate ventricular megaly. In this image, the atrial width is of 2.57 cm, so this is severe ventricular megaly. So what are the CNS etiologies of ventricular megaly? These include agenesis of corpus callosum, aqueductal stenosis, cephalocele, chiari or chiari 2 malformation, dandy walker abnormality, infection, intracranial hemorrhage, and vein of galleon malformation. In this axial image, you can see the dilated third ventricle. The third ventricle is normally a slit light structure. It is a bit difficult to visualize, but as it is dilated in this image, you can clearly see it indicated by the arrow. In this axial image of the fetal head, there is mild ventricular megaly with dangling choroid plexus and the ventricular width is of 1.06 indicated by the cursor. Amniocentesis revealed trisomy 21. Now in these next few images, I will be talking about the aqueductal stenosis. So what is the aqueductal stenosis? It is when there is an obstruction of the aqueduct of Sylvius, the narrow channel collecting the, connecting the third and the fourth ventricles. It is common cause of hydrocephalus and it is characterized by dilatation of the lateral and the third ventricle without a dilated fourth ventricle. So in this axial image you can see severe hydrocephalus with a dangling diminutive choroid plexus indicated by the short arrow. The severe hydrocephalus is indicated by the long arrow. Now in this axial image you can see the dilated third ventricle indicated by the short arrow. It is causing the splaying of the thalami indicated by the T. Also seen is the lateral ventricle which is enlarged. Now in this image you can see that there is no evidence of the dilated fourth ventricle in the expected position of the anterior portion of the posterior fossa. So these findings indicate that it is aqueductal stenosis as there is enlargement of the lateral ventricle and the third ventricle but the fourth ventricle is not dilated. Now this is the axial image of the fetal head at 18 weeks showing normal appearing lateral ventricle measuring 0.73 cm. Now this is the follow up ultrasound of the, of the same fetus as in the previous image. At 34 weeks you can see both the lateral and the third ventricles are dilated. This is a slightly different scan plane of the same fetus. You can see there is no evidence of a dilated fourth ventricle in the anterior portion of the posterior fossa indicated by the short arrow but the lateral ventricles are dilated so this also is a case of stenosis of the aqueduct of Sylvius. Now this is the image of fetal hydrencephaly. It is a rare condition in which the cerebral hemispheres are replaced by large fluid filled cavity secondary to occlusion of the middle cerebral or internal carotid arteries. Hydrencephaly is a lethal condition. You can see in this image there is no cerebral hemisphere. Now how do you differentiate severe hydrocephalus from hydrencephaly? This is an image of severe hydrocephalus and you can see a thin rim of maintained cortical tissue indicated by the arrowheads. In hydrencephaly there is no cortical tissue. So I really hope you like this video. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll come up with more such interesting content. Thank you.